It's time for some tiebreakers here on the Bangalore International Premier League. Exciting times, Raid, Hack, and Wild will be going into a round robin to see who can get the first 2-0. That yeah. is the elusive <laughs> score that each of these teams will be looking for. Yeah. Otherwise, we will just continue to run round robin. So exactly. This, yeah. And if they each go one and one, then we do it again. And if they go one and one again, then we do it again. <laughs> and, you know, we could be here all night, Monte Cristo. Yeah, we could. But in the interim, we do have a chance at least to go 2-0 and in the first two games. That is the possibility, of course, uh, because we are playing that winner versus wild first. If either Raid or Hack can also beat wild, it just ends right there. So could be two games, could be... Could be 17. Yeah, we just don't know. Yeah. <laughs> We'll just have to wait and see. Either way, it's going to be a lot of fun. Maybe not so much for Wild. That was a pretty devastating loss they took, and I'm sure they're not very happy right now that they're being forced to play in these tiebreakers. Okay, no more Vox, Glaive, Adagio. I don't want to no, see it please. again. I think it's bad. <laughs> the idea behind it, you know, maybe it's a decent one. Glaive is very strong these days, but... Not with those certain heroes that he's been mixed with. Yeah, taking a look at our three teams, of course, Raid will be coming back. And they did beat Hack in the first outing. So that was with Liege just going nuts on the Ringo, though. And I, I think that Raid probably has the least likely chance of making it out of this just because we saw Wild just shut them down by camping Liege. And once you give everybody else that kind of roadmap to beating a team, we really saw that Dista and Spell weren't as big of a threat. Yeah. Well, we'll see uh, if Hack is going to be able to do the same here against Raid. Here is Raid coming down to the studio again. Unfortunately, they did go one and two in the group, so they are forced into the situations themselves. I'm sure they're happy with it, though. Because oh, yeah, uh, if, if Wild had won, they wouldn't have had any chance. But now they do. Now they do. So they, their destiny is in their hands. Hack on the other side of the arena. They did, again, lose to Raid than the first time they played. But I think if you just take out the Ringo or have a plan to camp the Ringo, then you're going to be in a pretty good situation. We'll see if Leeds has learned from that game, especially if he is going up against a similar composition where maybe he'll just say, okay, maybe I just have to play a bit more passive, get my, my sprint boots a bit earlier, and not get caught out. Okay, we're gonna go right into the draft here on OGN, and it will be Scarf actually banned, probably smart, considering that Galaxy was pretty awesome on that hero Oh yeah, in their last game, and Glaive is actually going to be the ban here. Coming through. Galaxy does not care. He'll play the other big laning crystal power hero in Celeste. And Kosh got picked up alongside Catherine. So a lot of single target crowd control could set up for some really nice solar storms from Galaxy. And now we're waiting for Raid to actually lock in here. Taco would be nice. But, you know, you. It's another composition that's designed to shut down Liege. You have Koshka with her ultimate giving that long duration stun. You have the Catherine once again. So post six could be quite deadly. Plex can get on top of Liege if he decides to go for that Ringo, but Jewel much tankier. Nope, going to be Ringo, okay. I don't know about this. Maybe a bit of a mistake, but we'll see how it's going to work out for him. Taka and Catherine still being hovered over here. I mean, the stun lock is massive. Merciless Pursuit, Koshka Ultimate, Core Collapse. I don't see Liege living for very long. Catherine picked, and Koshka. All right, we're going into it. Tiebreakers start now. Group C tiebreakers, Raid versus Hack, our first begun. match of the day. I feel like the more the more you invest into Koshka skins, the more naked she gets. That's like the really? reward. <laughs> <laughs> the reward of buying Koshka skins. 
It's interesting. Um, I think I think Vainglory does do a, a pretty decent job of covering up the women, though. I mean, you, you look at <laughs> you look at Celeste, you look at Catherine. I'm, I'm I'm actually serious here, although it does sound like a joke. But I mean, generally, you, you don't get too many revealing <laughs> costumes here. Got to make up for it with Costco, though. Yeah, <laughs> just Costco. I mean, she's like a, a cat girl, so I guess it kind of makes sense. All cat girls are naked? That's what I'm Well, learning. I mean, they don't really wear clothes, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> they're cats, right? <laughs> okay. I guess she could have fur, but that would just look weird. Yes. Yes, I think it would. Well, yeah. hack here. Uh, trying to play a little bit defensively. Raid getting in early and Plex taking some damage, but Galaxy there with the zoning Heliogenesis. But a little bit more aggressive play. Again, we do have identical jungle roam combinations. Look at this. Looking for Liege. Getting so far up in the lane again, and he is going to go down instantly. Well, Hack has learned. <laughs> yeah. Hack has learned from Wild what to do against Raid. And Liege did not learn. <laughs> I mean, he didn't even have to be up that far. And also, you notice that Galaxy did pick up the boots. I think that's a very smart pickup, considering you have pretty similar lineup with the Catherine and the Kashka on the other side. The slow from the Ringo is also hard to get away from, so boots are going to be good, whereas the Ringo just going for the weapon blade there. I mean, it does make sense. It makes it easier to last hit, but... Just very aggressive. Uh, not sure what Galaxy is doing. He had a chance just to recall after taking it, and instead he just walks straight into spell. He could have just gone down to the bottom left corner of the map and recalled, and instead he is going to try and get out of this situation, but it is a 2v1, and he is going to die. Weird. Mm. I really liked the, the counter jungling he was doing. I thought it gave him a very clever advantage when they knew where certain members of Raid were, but... Just have to back out and recall right there, not run yeah. around into a Catherine. That is the big problem there. Uh, we've seen it done successfully before, and usually you just recall back in the bottom left corner or the bottom right corner, depending which side you're on. I mean, that Liege going to come out to a CS lead, and Camp Liege is happening again here. He's looking for any <laughs> opportunity they can. He did pick up both his sprint boots and the flare, so he's like, okay, I think I'm beginning to realize what's going on here. Galaxy getting a little scared right there. Doesn't have to be. No Catherine engaged, so it does use his sprint boots a little frivolously. And now Raid pushes that lane up, and time for invading has arrived. Dista already level four, so is Plex, and here they go. Stun down onto Dista. Liege gets that Achilles shot off phone. He uses his shield, but he is likely not going to live through this, and there isn't really much counterplay. Galaxy not coming down. So another kill handed over to Raid. Galaxy leaving them there. Also, the scout traps in the tri bush here for Raid were very nice. There was also one by the shop, so they actually spotted Plex coming in here for the invade. So now they're coming back looking for him. And I don't think he should be able to get away. Yeah, he can. Oh? Just yeah. recall out. Doesn't take that long. But he's going to be able to find him in enough time. So they do take away a few camps and get back safely. Lee's still coming out with a very healthy lead. That could be problematic. Galaxy needs some time to build up his crystal power to really be effective in this game. Lee's is just always on, on point there with the, the last hits and the farming in the lane. It's part of the reason he is so effective on heroes such as Ringo. Very farm dependent hero. Well, I'm I'm intrigued here because the when we have both Koshka and Catherine on two different teams and low mobility carries. Okay, well Flex is going to get caught out, has to kite back into the turret, and that's gonna be the end of that. Just chunked out Plex right there. But when you have Ringo and Celeste, and you have so much single target lockdown, it really is going to be about who is able to reflex block better <laughs> and then get the damage down. Yeah. So the the CS differential that we've already seen develop in the lane could mean the difference between an earlier reflex block for Liege, and that means a pretty big power spike in the early game. Liege has to use his boots just to get out of that situation. Phone 
using his shield and he's going to get stunned though and here we go ultimate down onto Dista he gets caught and they will trade one for one so Plex hitting level six first and turning that around scout trap going to be fired there get some nice AoE damage and Galaxy just back to farming yeah I think the goal in these team fights is really just going to be get Catherine in there first, either force the reflex, reflex block out so that Kashka can ultimate afterwards, or you can chain it up. If you get the stun down and then Kashka is stun as well, you're not gonna be able to use that reflex block. Maybe you can get focused down. It's going to be on a, a razor's thin edge here in every single team fight, that is for sure. Yeah, one misuse of a Kashka ultimate could cost quite a bit here yeah galaxy is pushing forward trying to come back when it comes to that farming but his last hitting just hasn't really been there compared to Liju's doubling him yeah part of that definitely is picking up the sprint boot first it makes it much harder to last hit those minions in the lane sacrificing a bit of farm for some survivability it's lurking there in the brush Raid waiting, and the the other big difference here is that when we have crystal power heroes like Celeste and Koshka on the same team, it is a lot easier to itemize, whereas Ringo adds that weapon power in, so it becomes more difficult to figure out how exactly you're going to build against it. Yeah. So even though Celeste does more damage in the late game, the shield stacking will be more effective yeah, that's from a, Raid. That's a really good point. I mean, you already see d stun spell picking up kinetic shields, and I'm sure Lise is eventually going to pick up something after that reflex block, which I think the oak heart should be built into. Uh, maybe going for fountain here. Let's see. And Deez actually gonna get caught out, and there's the stun lock from the core collapse. Just no time to do anything. And now they're gonna fall onto Liege. Where's the next stun going to come from? Sprint Boots being used to move Galaxy forward right there. Liege doing his best to kite, but that was the catch they needed. Getting the Merciless Pursuit straight into the core collapse, and that's an easy kill. Spell Whoa. gonna try and come in. I don't know about this spell. What do you think you're going to do right here? He was going that for the was, steal, I suppose. That was super optimistic. Yeah. I, I've seen that in a couple of my solo queue games, but I think that's the first we've seen here at the pro level, I suppose. I mean, maybe you get lucky and take that gold miner, but I mean, the, it's not an overwhelming difference yet when it comes to an advantage, so why throw your life away? Yeah, the chance of getting it to is so incredibly low. I mean, if you have actual damage, that's fine, but he's a Rome Catherine yeah. <laughs> with the Merciless Pursuit. Not likely to be successful. Mm -hmm. We do have uh, two Fountain of Renewals picked up on Hack's side as well. And we do see, finally, Plex building some armor as Ringo slowly gets online here. It's smart that they did build into that shield first, by the way, as... Uh, Mostly the crystal damage is going to be coming out from the lineup. Okay, well, Hack just trying to protect the minion miner right now. Throw down a candy onto it from Phone. And Raid moving back into the mid lane right now, but there's it's just a defensive game from Hack. They're looking to snowball, protect the gold miner, play conservatively while they try and get more farm onto this Celeste. Now, Plex. Vastly outclassing Dista right now. Gets that quick Fountain of Renewal, one of those very core items on Takashka. So double Fountain of Ren Renewals right now means just that much more sustain for Hack as a team. Just, it's all about the Minion Mine Protection, or the Gold Mine Protection, rather. Mm -hmm. Minion Candy bought here. You can see the cherries, and they're just going to be hovering around it for now. All right, here we go again, and there's the engage. Uh, Galaxy gets stunned right away, but then we have the back-to-back -back Koshka ultimates. Uh, that is going to be another victory. Leash really wants to get onto Galaxy right here. He's going to get the kill, but I don't think he's going to be able to kite that out. Nope, Phone gets the auto attack for the finisher. And two for one, Hack takes yet another team fight advantage. Yeah, kind of an interesting play there from Ringo Disa. 
going down pretty quickly as well, but Lee's just, just running in there as fast as possible. Uh, he doesn't even have that big of a very, you know, he doesn't have a, an early game build here. He's going for the Sorrow Blade and going for some upgraded boots. Yeah. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, you can see actually Dista right there picking the wrong target to ult, I think. So maybe a bit of an issue in finishing that off. And at least, you know, he knows that if he can take out the Celeste, he could probably clean up the rest of that fight, but too low in terms of HP by the time he actually gets the kill. Yeah. And I believe that Galaxy's uh, Solar Storm got interrupted as well. I don't think that actually got off. Oh, I, I'd have to look at that again. I didn't see. It could it have been uh, interrupted by a Merciless Pursuit or something like that during that fight. Yeah. Well, we are just going to have uh, both teams continue to farm. It looks like Raid's looking for a gank possibly on Galaxy. If they can just get one kill, they can get that gold mine. So this is a very important point of contention for Raid. Well, they have to make a move soon. Gold mine approaching full status. He's getting there. Raid's really just looking for the kill, but smart. Here we go. Back. Galaxy gonna get stunned right away, but there's a counter ultimate there onto Dista. Galaxy on his own. There's the Solar Storm, but he still falls. Leash finds him on the flank. Phone having to retreat right now. That damage gone. This is the fight they wanted. Yeah, it definitely was. They're going to take some damage from the scout trap. Can they actually stop this? Remember, Minion Candy will be powering up that gold miner's auto attack. So it's, ooh, another nice hit. Dista getting quite low. And Celeste back up now. Have they stalled out long enough? Hack dancing here with Raid. They have to go for it right now. Minion Candy's down, so that's going to be an up. Great, but Plex is in the middle twirling, and there's another ultimate onto Plex. Plex going to get stunned, but they do actually pick up a kill. Liege under threat at the moment, and there's another one going over to Plex, and they save the gold mine and get the payout immediately. Clutch play from Hack. Yeah, really nicely done. Raid just trying to force it there. And uh, it's kind of risky. At the same time, you were mentioning, you know, Celeste coming back. Plex in a really great position there. It's supposed to be careful. No energy. I'm getting chunked out heavily by those Heliogenesis. But it does manage to keep the turret for now. No turrets down in this game, despite being almost 13 minutes in. Mm. So. Hack, you know, they did get that gold mine, but they never really got a big fight where they took down a bunch of members to open that up for them. Not yet, at least. They still are ahead, about three and a half K gold. Wow, Plex going for a pauldron this game, so very defensive Koshka build. Trying to shut down the auto attack speed of Liege once he gets that ultimate off, so... It's, it's pretty much in this game, all up to Celeste and Ringo to deal most of the damage. Mm, for sure. It does look like Plex is also going to pick up a broken myth eventually. So he's going to be very tanky, so that We'll definitely get full stacks pretty quickly. She should be able to survive for a long time in these fights, so it's also a nice pickup there. I do see the same from Disa, actually. Minus the pauldron because he's so far behind in, in farm. Yes, he is. And there's the ults going down left and right. But Ray caught a choke point, and there's the solar storm. Now we can see Celeste really starting to ramp up. Yeah. Core collapse hitting two of those members as well. Ray kind of bunching up, not doing a great job in that fight. Yeah, Plex is going to get targeted underneath the turret. Liege wants some damage. Liege low on energy, though, and there's Plex. He's going to hop in, pouncing forward. Diving this pretty aggressively. They get some good poke damage down. That turret is so low. But Galaxy, just not enough energy here to finish it off. Does have that Void ba Battery, but for Celeste, a very energy-intensive hero. Plex going in once again, but he doesn't really have the damage. He's going to tank this out, force him back. But they're not going to find a time to actually kill that turret with Celeste shopping in base right now. Frostburned picked up for Galaxy. Interesting. Yeah, I guess that'll be helpful against the uh, Ringo that continues to dive her. And uh, he did actually pick that up in the last game with Scarf as well. Just likes to be way in the back and just poke the enemy heroes down. It's kind of his play style, so it's not really too surprising. More money in the hands of Hack. 
As the Kraken spawns, Galaxy still behind when it comes to CS, but that's balanced out by Plex being very far ahead of Dista. And I don't know about Lee. She always goes for this Sorrow Blade first build. Whereas we see a lot of other players just trying for that tension bow. There we go. Ult to the turret. And jeez. Ult combo from Catherine and Celeste doing huge damage to Leash. I don't know if that was a mistake or was he really just trying to secure that kill on the turret? Because, I mean, Tasha's ultimate, one of the longest in the game. Of course, you can get back. Uh, they have no ults here. This could be a mistake from Hack. I don't know if they can actually go for this, but they may have just inadvertently handed it over. We're going to pull it into the oh, tribe. Oh, big scout trap. Detonation spell wants to go in. It is going down right now as it goes backwards. Liege going to get stunned and then destroyed. Galaxy in the back line. There's an ult from Dista. He will pick up the kill onto Celeste, but Liege falls. And now it's just a scrap between the Catherines and the Koshkas. And Plex getting low. I mean, Has to jump is, back to the jungle camp. Uh, going to be able to take him down here. Phone all alone. Should be able to get away, I think, on this Catherine with that shield. It's okay. He'll just uh, be like ET and phone home. Mm. So <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Galaxy back up now. So, I mean, why would you go for that that attempt at the Kraken right there when you just use several key ultimates to try and take out Liege unsuccessfully? You had time to go back and then re-enter the fray. I think if Plex had uh, saved his ultimate to not use it on the turret, they could have actually even just taken that fight against, um, against Raid. Well, with their lead, you would definitely think so, but mm. they are... I mean, it's, it's the Koshka ultimate that they're very reliant on, more so than the Solar Storm. They need to buy time with that crowd control, and now have to reset their sights on cracking a little bit later on. We do have Broken Myth and a Crystal Infusion picked up on Plex, so he's no longer just, you know, this Koshka that stands around and is annoying and stuns you and slows your attack speed and stuff. He can actually begin to do some damage here. Double Broken Myth for the attack team. Raid finally uh, actually getting more of a presence in the middle of the map. After denying that Kraken, they have been able to set up better vision than we've seen from them previously. Everyone just sitting at the Kraken right now, except for Celeste. Okay, are they good? Okay, they know where Spell is. Galaxy here now, phone running point. Trying to get some poke down with the Heliogenesis. They're going to open up this fight with a Hellfire Brew. On to Galaxy, get some decent damage there, but there's really no follow-up. And that's all the poke that Raid really has, especially with Ringo running low on energy. Yeah, keep in mind they have double Fountain of Renewal as well to regain that health. And here comes Phone right onto Spell. The Galaxy in the back lines, you can see the core collapse, stunning Dista for just a second. Spell really wants this kill, but Galaxy lives long enough. However, he will go down to the Koshka ultimate, but Liege left all by himself now. And that'll be an easy pickup. Koshka able to chase him down for the ace. Now, yeah, very nicely done. I think Koshka got stunned before uh, Dista on that Koshka got stunned before it actually went down onto Galaxy. So Galaxy able to really chain up a bunch of her abilities and do a ton of damage in the early stages of that fight. And this is going to give Hack a very nice lead now. Going to take down another turret and possibly even another one. We're getting later on this game, these death timers are pretty long. They are. So I was, I was concerned about that engage, considering that the initial crowd control, the initial stun went down onto the Catherine, but they made it work, and Galaxy kiting well enough to survive in that situation. Let's take a look at this one again, because the silence goes down without doing much of anything, and then they get on to spell. And, yeah, there's a stun there, and Celeste actually does not get stunned by Koshka. Uh, Will gets done right now, actually, as the ult comes through. Mm. So, found it on the backside of that fight, but they locked down the enemy Koshka immediately, got, getting their core collapse and then Kosh into the Koshka ultimate first, so that limited Dista's ability to fight. Alfire Brew again onto Galaxy early, reflex blocked, but they find Liege. 
There's the Solar Storm. Ooh, Lead Star doesn't hit. That's pretty bad, actually. And here we go again, but the AoE is just so huge that even with those shield builds, it's not enough, and Liege has to back off. Yeah, Core Collapse on two. You can't really bunch up against this composition for Pack. I mean, we, we've seen this from Liege uh, with this kind of build. He doesn't really have too much of a presence until very late on in this game. I mean, he hasn't been able to pick up too many kills. He's got six deaths. He's got decent minion farm, but he was also forced to pick up an Aegis against the team he was going against. He's kind of lacking so far. Okay, well, here we go. Is this going to be the final push? You can see that damage coming around on the Heliogenesis, and here we go. Those turrets are dead, and Raid bottled up in their base right now. Leash taking a large amount of damage from the Celeste, and it's ring around the Bane Crystal at the moment. Dista's ult goes down. They do kill Galaxy, but there is a Kraken looming large over the Crystal. There's one shot. Bone surviving, and they are not going to have time. This will be a win for Hack. So, Hack will go on to play Wild. If they can win against Wild again, they can lock up their spot in that Wild card to try and make the semifinals. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see where Wild's mind is at after that loss from the very long game against Hack earlier on today. And we'll be able to see if they... Uh, can actually pull it together this time and get a win. Okay, well, we will see Hack staying on stage while Wild makes their way forward. Galaxy comes through again for the team. Didn't look quite as good on that Celeste as he did on the Scarf, but still made it work. Yeah. Scarf just got a bit better spacing with that very long range Spitfire, whereas. Uh, Celeste, I mean, especially against the composition he was going against, he was going to get jumped on by pretty much every hero on the enemy team. So he did a decent job of at least kiting and allowing his teammates to to do the majority of the damage. Oh, absolutely, and a lot of it was the target selection. Plex looking good on the Koshka, and we will have Hack versus Wild after we take a short break.